In this video, I'm going to go over the top textbooks and materials you'll need for your PA program and school. These textbooks and materials should cover about 50 to 75% of the testable material for school and what you'll need to study for your certification exam. So I think you'll get a ton of value out of them and it'll be really helpful. If we haven't met before, my name is Luke with Canadian Path Assistant and I'm here bringing you some tips and insights about the pathologist's assistant profession. Let's get into it for today. So depending on where you look, there's actually quite a few textbooks on both the CCCPA and the ASCP reading list for pathologist assistant programs. The list is actually pretty long and comprehensive and they give you quite a number of options actually for textbooks, but I'm just gonna cover the ones that I think are the most important and the ones that I actually used while I was in school and when I was studying for my certification exams. And there are a couple main ones, uh, a couple that are free, and then some sort of supplemental extra ones that if you're looking to splurge, you can also look to pick up. So the kind of main textbooks I think that everyone is gonna need, there's three main ones. First one is gonna be Robbins, and this is sort of your, your basis foundation for all things pathology related. Then you're gonna need a histology book, so we're gonna talk about weeders briefly. Then from there, you're going to be looking for some kind of autopsy book. There's a, a couple that I'm going to mention there. From that, I think you will also need a dissection textbook. So we'll cover a couple options that you have there, some of the online resources that you can find for free, and then we'll end off with the sort of bonus book that you can get. So first off, Robbins, this is, I mean, this is basically your Bible for all things pathology. It covers a ton of your material that you learn in school, and it, uh, it has a bunch of photos along with it which are always great. The newer versions of Robbins also come with a digital copy and this is pretty much all I use. I didn't carry my textbook around. I bought the textbook, used the digital copy, and then kind of just left my big textbook on my bookshelf at home because it's huge. Another thing you can do here is there's actually a mini version of Robbins. It's called the Pocket Companion, but you know, baby Robbins for everyone who probably walks around with it. It's, it's significantly smaller, so if you actually wanted to carry around a book, that is a great option for those who don't want to use just a digital copy. Next off is the histology text. So I used Weeders for my histology and it, uh, it was great. I don't think an older edition is going to be problematic here. The kind of the photos and the physiology that they provide in the textbook are great. Uh, again, newer versions, you can get, get a digital copy. And I originally used an older textbook and ended up buying a newer one basically just so I could get the digital version of this book. Next off is an autopsy book. So there was actually a couple that I used here. I don't think both are necessary, but uh, it, it's nice to have a couple options. And these were the Handbook of Autopsy Practice. This one was by Brenda Waters. And then the Autopsy Pathology Manual and Atlas. And this has a bunch of authors. I believe the first one is Connolly on that list. So I would say most of the autopsy technique that we covered, I learned a lot kind of hands-on during practicum but there are some more specialized dissection techniques that you probably won't you may not get to experience while you're in practicum itself and these are good resources for that they also cover some of the demographic information some of the medical legal and terminology stuff that i found was sort of testable material but i didn't necessarily cover as much while i was in my program uh, now obviously these are two different books what are kind of the main differences so the manual and atlas first of all I think this was this was an outstanding, outstanding example of a book with great photos. I mean, they're all in color, they're super glossy. It was basically like reading a magazine. They were, they were great. Uh, the one that I had also had a, had a digital copy with it. So again, you could look at it while you're on the go. You don't have to carry the textbook around with you. It's not as big as Robin, so not as big of a deal to carry around if you wanted to. One thing that I did notice is that some of the basic dissection techniques, most specifically for cardiac dissections, it was not as comprehensive as the other option that we'll talk about in a second, but overall I thought still great, great resource. The other book, The Handbook of Autopsy Practice, this one was the one by Brenda Waters. Uh, it also had photographs, but I, I didn't find the photos actually quite as good. They were black and white, they were a little bit grainy, so things were a bit harder to see, but it made up for that in covering a couple, you know, sort of more basic dissection techniques around, uh, especially again around the heart, and that's something that I think ends up being a lot, uh, a lot of testable material. So it was good to have that coverage, but uh, but this book also didn't have a digital copy as well. So 
something to think about the, the manual and atlas. Great photos, digital copy, not as much in the dissection techniques. Um, the handbook of autopsy practice, black and white, no digital copy, but I think a little bit more comprehensive in some of the commonly tested questions, especially around cardiac dissections. Uh, if I was just going to choose one of them, I would probably take the handbook of autopsy practice just, uh, just solely for the heart and cardiac dissection stuff that they discuss. Next off, we need a dissection textbook. So there's a couple options here. There's the Westra's uh, Manual of Surgical Dissection and the Lester's Manual of Surgical Dissection. Between the two of them, I think there's a lot of carryover between what they discuss, but, uh, but again, a couple couple big differences. These, uh, I would say these had the, the greatest impact for any kind of complex specimens that you'd be grossing. Um, but if you, you know, if you can't decide between which to get, I would say get both because I found both of these online for free as PDFs, so it didn't, didn't cost me a thing. But some basic differences between these two, I'm going to start with Westra's. Uh, I, I found this was overall easier to read. It was pretty straightforward font. Things were, were pretty much to the point. There wasn't a lot of extra information that you had to skip through. It covered, uh, it covered dissection techniques with, I think, pretty clear illustrations and pictures. And I think the pictures here were actually the, the better of the two textbooks. They also covered some things like basic orientation. So for liver hilum, uh, eyes, lung hilum, those are sort of common anatomy questions that get bounced around a lot, especially on exams. I thought Westra's did actually a better job explaining that overall. And then they also gave you kind of overall guidelines on what you needed to sample for each type of surgical specimen and what sort of things to look for. So those are things like the, the various pathologies, what margins you need to assess, and, and you can use that information to actually frame your gross descriptions. Uh, the Lester's textbook, on the other hand, again, great resource. This one had a bit more of a technical, I guess, feel to it. I found it, it was actually a little bit harder to read, maybe because of it, but, uh, but by all means, not, you know, still worthwhile to read. There also seemed to be more information on overall lab processes, processing, and how, how actually reporting was done. The pictures in Lester's were, I would say they weren't quite as good as the pictures in Westra. They were maybe not quite as clear. Some of them were a little bit grainy. And, uh, and overall, I think, again, pictures are a little bit better in Westra's, but that didn't really take, take away overall from the textbook. They, uh, one thing they did do is they actually provided example gross descriptions for a bunch of the different specimen types. So if you were grossing a thyroid or a colon, um, you know, whether it be a neoplastic or an uh, inflammatory bowel, they would actually provide a, a gross description that you could use to model your grosses, which I found actually really helpful when I first started having to form those gross descriptions. They also include a bit of staging info in Lester's. And now this is probably not up to date because the staging you know, criteria change from year to year. So just something to keep in mind. So the next resource, this one is an online resource. So we're kind of out of the realm of textbooks now, but the AJCC Cancer Staging Manual. Again, this can be found online and this kind of covers all your T and M staging that you'll need to know for both for school and for work. Now you don't need to actually buy anything here. Again, it's online, it's free, and this is something that I still use basically today or every week, uh, especially when I'm grossing more complex specimens that I don't deal with as routinely. One other thing that is beneficial for this resource is they include some anatomy photographs and also they'll put illustrations on what some of the staging looks like. So for uh, perhaps a liver tumor, they'll actually, some of them have pictures of, you know, a liver tumor T1, T2, T3, and T4, which just sort of help visualize the whole process, especially because some of the T staging gets a little bit confusing. Uh, again, this is an online free resource and I'll put a link for this down in the description below. Now, you may be wondering, what about books on just anatomy and physiology? Uh, personally, I didn't find that these were actually something I needed for my program. A lot of the PA programs out there actually will prefer, and some even require, their students to have prereqs in anatomy and physiology. So I didn't, I didn't find myself lacking without having books on that. And actually, if I didn't know something, I just basically Googled or used the internet to look up the relevant anatomy for that portion of tissue, and that was usually sufficient. Also something to keep in mind is that the textbooks that we've already gone through, uh, I would say especially Weeders and the surgical books and the autopsy pathology book, they all have a bunch of anatomy in them, whether it be photographs or descriptions, so you can use that as a resource as well. You don't necessarily need an A&P book. 
Uh, neuroanatomy, again, this was something that I found Google or just the internet was totally sufficient for. Forensic uh, autopsy pathology, again, here and there it popped up, but just the regular, the regular autopsy pathology book, again, was totally sufficient. Uh, any kind of pediatric pathology, I found just what I covered on my peds rotations, as well as information in Robbins and the other books that is specific to pediatrics. Again, totally sufficient, so I wouldn't buy a specific pediatric pathology book. The lab management side of things, based on what I saw with my training and for certification exams, not worth buying a textbook. Some of it is just common sense, and you know, if you just look at some question banks when you're actually studying, totally, I think, sufficient to, to cover what you need to know. Um, anything to do with billing codes, I think, personally, it's a waste of time. Your final exam may have up to one question, and the amount of time that you'd spend memorizing billing codes versus other things, not worthwhile, so I wouldn't bother with, with any billing codes. The last thing that I think may be worthwhile, and this is kind of a, an extra little bonus if you have some extra money to spare, or if you're just generally interested, is a histotechnology book specifically. So I ended up picking the picking up the Carson's histotechnology book sort of after I was done my training program and when I was actually studying for exams. And this covered a lot of things like sort of the how and why different fixatives work the way they do. It covers some things with decalcification and also some staining specific uh, information. And I just found generally it was helpful. I think maybe five, definitely less than 10 questions, five to 10 questions were related specifically to histotechnology on my final certification exam. So this was useful for covering that, but, uh, but again, probably a, a splurge towards the end of your program if you're looking at it versus something you need to get up front. The last thing I might mention is I don't think you necessarily need to knock older textbooks. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily required to get the newest edition textbook if you need. Secondhand books are you know totally fine. One benefit you might not get from those though is you might not get the digital copy. So if you're really gunning for that digital copy, you might have to buy new. Otherwise, secondhand, Amazon, Kijiji, wherever, if you find extra textbooks or older textbooks, Totally fine, I think go for it, that's awesome. What will this probably end up costing you? I think less than $500, really. Uh, I just Googled the Robbins Weeders and an autopsy book just this last week and I was able to find all of them for about 100 bucks Canadian just on Amazon, so you should be able to pick those up under $500. And again, the Lester's and Westra, online for free, and the AJCC staging manual, again, online for free. So you shouldn't be breaking the bank for books. So anyways, hope that information about textbooks was helpful. Good luck to anyone heading into school or who is studying for their certification exams, and I will catch you guys next time.